Oh, you don't look too enthused. <laughs> I am knackered. I'm working on an article with a deadline of, um, well, effectively five o'clock this evening. So. Can you tell us what the difference is between special and general relativity? Uh, there's various differences, but the, I mean, the simplest one, the simplest difference is that special relativity is relatively easy and general relativity is incredibly difficult. Special relativity is to do with the idea that the speed of light is constant no matter which frame of reference you're in. So if you're travelling in a train, the speed of light you'll measure will be the same as if you're stationary. Einstein then realised that there's something funny in a gravitational field. And it took him ages to work this out, but I mean, this was the greatest piece of work he ever did. So again, classic example that people use is to talk about uh, being in a lift. And you can't actually tell, if you feel, feel yourself pushed to the floor of the lift, you can't tell if that's because the lift is accelerating upwards or whether it's because the pull of gravity is pulling you downwards onto the floor of the lift. And general relativity is all about the equivalence of those two things. Special relativity, you can't consider accelerations at all. Everything has to be travelling at constant speed. And so you don't have these reference frames that accelerate. You don't have things like lifts accelerating. You have to think about just things travelling at constant speed. And he realised that mass was equal to energy, and energy could be attracted to anything which has a mass through the gravitational force. So the idea was put in his head that light doesn't actually travel in a straight line at the speed of light, it can actually travel in a curved path because it can be bent by the gravitational field. And so he tried to incorporate into the theory of relativity the idea that you could have a, a distortion of space-time and the light will then travel in a curved path and that's the field of general relativity. Special relativity came first. Einstein came up with special relativity um, and then actually spent quite a long time uh, dealing with general relativity, coming up with general relativity. And the reason is that actually the maths you need to do special relativity is actually pretty trivial. You need Pythagoras' theorem, the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. If you know that, you know all the maths you really need to do special relativity. Um, whereas general relativity, the maths you need is truly scary. I look at all the maths for that and it's really frightening. But he then predicted what should be seen and in about 1919 there was an expedition with Eddington that confirmed his predictions. They were slightly suspect experiments, but this made a big uh, headlines at the time because here was German science being vindicated by British experiments. And so he became the first superstar of science because of that. To put things in perspective, we can teach special relativity to first year undergraduates and they love it because it doesn't use any maths that they haven't already seen, but the results you get out of it are truly astounding. You know, the, the difficult thing about special relativity isn't the maths, it's understanding what comes out of that maths at the end. Whereas general relativity, final year undergraduates still struggle with it. Special is in, uh, designed for situations where there is no mass around and just light going around in a straight line. General then tries to incorporate the, incorporate the ideas of special relativity in a gravitational field. So does general relativity sort of take special relativity into the real world? Yes, that's perfect. That's a perfect answer. If you could change the value of any constant, what would it be and why? I mean, it would be fun to see what would happen if I changed the value of either of uh, Planck's constant Newton's constant. I've mentioned what the damage, potential damage changing Newton's constant could be. Don't change any of them because if we change them too much it may be very very unfavorable for life. Planck's constant's affecting things on the very small, Newton's constant's affecting things on the very large, and so slight modifications of these could have dramatic effects on, on, on either of these scales. So I think the world is not perfect but let's not fiddle around with them too much. I think we'd better not even ask that question. Um, well, it's tough because they're all combined with other things, so you change one and you don't really know how the other things would get affected. I guess it would probably be Planck's constant, just because Planck's constant is the thing that kind of dictates all the quantum mechanics in the universe, and the quantum universe is such a bizarre thing, you know, this strange property that particles can be wave-like and a single particle can simultaneously pass through two different apertures and all sorts of weird things. The trouble is it only happens on the tiny microscopic scale, so you never get to see it. Probably Planck's constant again, because then you could 
okay, very hand wavingly. If you if we took Planck's constant instead of it being six point six three by ten to the minus thirty four joule second, if we made it much much larger, then the sort of weird quantum effects that we we experience right down at the scale of atoms and molecules would become um, apparent in in the, in the visible world. See, I I don't think I'd go messing around with a good thing. I think the universe is pretty interesting the way it is. It's pretty fine tuned. Um, so if we start messing about with something, even if we could do that, um, it's probably likely that we'd obliterate ourselves out of existence. If I could mess around with Planck's constant so I could actually see some of those weird quantum effects but actually just in the lab or you know, on the table in front of me, that would be a great experiment to be able to do. Being able to, to walk through walls or tunnel through walls and diffract and interfere, that might possibly not be the, the, the greatest thing. It would certainly lead to a, a very different world, a very different set of physics. If I could change anything really, it would be Dirac's constant, which is H with a little line through it. If you come across that, it's Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. And I would put everything in those units and drive everybody else crazy, because then you get these 10 to the 34s coming all over the place. Or the ratio between the gravitational force and the electromagnetic force, it's some ridiculously huge number. Um, and, and we don't know why or how. So if that changed a bit, it would, it would change whether or not stars could form and what their lifetimes would be. So sure, shake things up, change that ratio. There are some people, by the way, believe the constants are not constant and that they have been changing over time. And, and, and so s there are lots of observational tests to see whether these constants, in particular Newton's constant, and the charge of the electron it changes. Uh, that would be fun, change the charge on the electron a bit and see what happens to atoms as they get a bit bigger. So, yeah, I'll stick with the universe as it is with the fundamental constants that we have, thanks.